Imagine this, a campfire that is completely self-sustaining, burns for an incredibly long time, features its own built-in cook surface, and best of all, utilizes only one log. That, my friends, is what is known as the Swedish Fire Torch, and we are actually going to be building one today. So, what do you say we get this show on the road? Hey there guys, John here of course, and we are going to be demonstrating how to build the Swedish Fire Torch today, as well as a slight modification and upgrade if you will, that will allow it to be just a little bit more effective and easy to use while you're out in the field. So what do you say we go ahead and jump right into this? Now the first thing we're going to need here is of course a log, kind of goes without saying right? Now when you're selecting the log, the actual size diameter is really going to be dependent on your own personal needs and preferences. If you want a longer lasting, larger fire, you're going to obviously go with a larger diameter log. If you need something for boiling up a quick uh, you know, pot of water or a cup of coffee, something like that, you can obviously go with a smaller diameter log. Once we've selected the log, we'll go ahead and cut it down to a manageable uh, length, say something between 12 and 18 inches in total length. Uh, we'll have that log cut, actually bring it back to base camp where we can begin the process of quartering it. Now in quartering the log is where we actually begin the process of constructing the actual fire torch. Uh, that's where it really takes shape. And the tools that we're going to use are once again dependent on the size of the log. As you can see here, I've got a, a fairly decent sized knife in the Buck 119, yet it is a little bit inadequate for the task at hand here as you can see. It just will not match up with the size log I have. So you can go ahead and switch up, uh, use the right tool for the right job as they say, an axe, a hatchet, a chainsaw if you happen to have one, uh, will always come in handy. But what we are going to do is we're going to make a cut straight down the middle of the log. That's going to be our first step. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this cut now. Okay, well we've got the first cut uh, made. We've actually got our logs split in half here. And one quick point I want to demonstrate really fast. You guys can see this. Uh, I'm not really sure if you can or not due to lighting. but. The interior of this wood is absolutely bone dry. Now it's been raining out here for two or three days straight. So this is one of the benefits of this uh, type of fire design is that you're gonna actually be getting into the wood that uh, you know is nice and dry and is gonna get you a good fire going really quickly. So uh, now that we've got that uh, cut in half, we're actually going to cross cut it uh, make another cut and this is where we're going to get all four of the quarters that we need. Alright, now as you can see we have all of our quarters cut here. We've actually got them arranged uh, kind of where they fell I guess you'd say. Um, and this is going to make it easier to put back together, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle where all the pieces will fit together. But we've kind of got a little bit of a star pattern going here. Now. The little improvement or I guess upgrade is uh, I said in the beginning to this is uh, actually just uh, something really simple uh, that's going to help the fire get going a little bit faster here. And that is uh, simply feather sticking the interior of this. And what we're going to do is take our knife or our hatchet and just uh, make a few uh, light cuts in there. Just going to get the interior of that wood. Uh, you know, give it kind of the feather stick effect, I guess. Lay that back in place, and we'll go ahead and repeat the process with all four uh, pieces of this log here. Now that we have all four quarters of this log cut and uh, the interior kind of feather sticked out a little bit, we're going to go ahead and reassemble the whole uh, shooting match here. And this is where uh, keeping everything in order actually helps a lot for this process. As you can see, this thing's going to go back together. Uh, just the way that it came for us here. And once we get that kind of in position, we're actually going to separate each quarter just a little bit. I'm actually going to pile up a little bit of sand around here to keep everything nice and stable. 
uh, repeat the process with uh, each of the four quarters of this log. And as you can see here, I'm actually allowing a little bit of air space in between these logs. It's just like any fire, uh, you know, to get it going, you need uh, obviously fuel, heat, and oxygen. And this is absolutely no different here. All right, now that we have everything reassembled and set up, uh, we actually have the basis for our uh, Swedish fire torch. Uh, we actually do have our Swedish fire torch. The only thing left to do is actually put a fire to this thing. Always the fun part, right? Now, uh, of course, you can use natural, uh, you know, kindling, natural material materials in the area to get the fire going in this. Um, it has been raining out here for a couple of days, so everything's just soaking wet, and so. Uh, I always carry a little bit of uh, man-made or uh, some type of natural good uh, fire starting material. In this case, I've just got a few shavings of fatwood, one of my personal favorite uh, fire starters. And um, it's really simple here, guys. Just obviously light your uh, tinder source. In this case, it is the good old fatwood here. And drop it down the middle. And we're going to go ahead and actually add a couple of other pieces to this. Uh, the primary uh, goal here is to actually get the uh, interior surface of this, of this log burning and it really requires a very small amount of effort and uh, like I said uh, tinder kindling to get that process going especially when we've utilized the uh, feather stick method on the interior of the logs. It shouldn't take more than a couple minutes to get this thing really roaring so let's uh, kind of keep an eye on it and see how she does. Well, as you guys can see, this thing is in full self-sustain mode right now. She's actually been burning for a good 15 to 20 minutes now. The initial fire starter kindling that we put in here burned out uh, quite some time ago. Actually started igniting the interior of the wood within the first 30 seconds or so, uh, thanks to the shavings that we did. It really did help the actual ignition process. And uh, like I said, it's in full self-sustain mode. We've got some good flames, some nice solid coals. This thing's actually putting out a surprising amount of heat right now. Um, feel the old legs getting the burn on them. So uh, it can only mean one thing. It's time to put the cup of coffee, or the pot of coffee on rather. And uh, well-deserved pot of coffee, I might add at that. So I'm gonna wrap up the video now, guys. Um, sit here, enjoy the sunset, a nice warm fire, and a good hot cup of coffee. But before I go, I wanted to say thanks a lot to all you guys for all your support and encouragement. It is truly appreciated. And until next time, you guys take the best of care, and we'll be seeing you real soon.